Okay, the final film across the spider verse called Mid. Cry about it. Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Over Here Studios here. On today's video, well, I'm going to be doing a Spider-Man movie tier list. Uh, this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while, and I'm also trying to experiment with different types of Spidey videos, not all to do with cosplay. So, yeah. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first movie we're going to start with, we're going to do it in order of just how they are here. So the first one is the very first Spider-Man film, Tobey Maguire. Um, I quite like this film. I would- I rewatch this film all the time, and I would say it's pretty good for a Spider-Man film. There's obviously some parts of it that aren't great, like obviously the CGI and stuff like that, but let's be real, it was 2002, there's not really much you could do about that. I mean, they didn't have great CGI back then. I really love the nostalgia that comes with this film, and the Spider-Man suit, and I think Toby's a great Peter Parker and Spider-Man. William Dafoe is the best Green Goblin ever. There's nobody that will ever top William Dafoe and he just plays the part so well. He was like made for this part. That's also a crucial part of the film and why I love it. So I think I'm gonna have to put this film in the amazing part. Um, also, I'd just like to say quickly, nobody get annoyed at any of my opinions. Uh, this is just purely based on my opinions and how I like the films. So if you disagree with him, that's completely okay, but don't come at me for something that is not the same as your opinion, okay? It's definitely not uh, cool, I guess, or kind of red. I don't, I don't even know what that means. Okay, I just fixed those names. I think the last three are way better than what they were before. Just hit the like button if you agree. <laughs> Second film, Spider-Man 2. I This is like my one of my favorite Spider-Man films. Uh, out of the Tobey Maguire films, is my favorite. Doc Ock is my favorite Spider-Man villain ever. I don't know, there's just something about it. Like, I really love the whole, like, four arms thing. Because it's, like, genuinely is a good villain to put against Spider-Man. It kind of matches how Spider-Man has his webs and can swing around and climb and stuff. And throughout the film, there's a lot of tension and it's very, very intense and I love it. I feel like, um, with Alfred Molina's amazing portrayal of Dr. Octavius, and also the fact that Otto Octavius, the guy himself, is not a bad person. It's the arms that are making him bad. That's what's so heartbreaking at the end and it makes me really feel for him. So I just love this film, all in all. I love the way Mary Jane at the end finds out that Peter's Spider-Man because I, I will admit Peter Parker is not 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 a great person in uh, the first and second film with when it comes to MJ. He lets her down a lot, um, just kind of lies to her and stuff and she deserved way better so her finally finding out why he can't be there all the time i just think that's perfect because otherwise she was just gonna feel like she's getting played constantly and anyways i'm gonna put this film in spectacular i don't know i just completely love it everything about it <laughs> next film spider-man 3 dookie uh you may be asking why dookie have you watched it I am not just following the trend that everyone says it's Dookie. I genuinely do believe this film is Dookie. It's not good. <laughs> I know he's a symbiote and he's meant to be mean and stuff, but they didn't do it right. There was just something about it. I don't know. I didn't like it. I feel like he needed to be meaner than what he was. I'm hoping in the next Spider-Man game that they do a better portrayal of Peter with the symbiote than this film did, because it did him really, really dirty. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. And the symbiote really dirty. When the symbiote is honestly pretty great, I quite like the symbiote, but, you know, it's not good, obviously. You don't want the symbiote because it messes with your brain, but it's cool. So, that fixes everything. Um, yeah, I just don't like this film, honestly. Okay, next film, The Amazing Spider-Man is going right there. I love this film. Fantastic. My first ever Spider-Man film I ever watched. I seen this in cinemas at the ripe age of five, and it was... It blew me away for real. This film was just so great. I don't know. I love the lizard. I love uh, Peter's suit in this. This suit. Ooh, I cannot get enough of this suit. It's a good suit. Gwen Stacy. I love Gwen Stacy. Uh, the Peter and Gwen that we've seen in, in all the movies. They're, in my opinion, the best romance we've seen. Um, she's the best love interest. And Andrew and Emma did great portraying that. I think they're fantastic. And in general, it seemed very, very real compared to Toby and MJ and uh, Tom and Zendaya. I forgot the girl's name who plays MJ in the Toby films. There's so many scenes in this that give me chills watching. I was five, by the way. 
I was watching this and I got chills and I was terrified. The lizard spooked the living hell out of me. I was scared of this guy, especially the sewer scene. The sewer scene, I had nightmares about that. That was so terrifying, but it, when I rewatch it now, it's so cool. I love the scene of like the webs moving and stuff. I just, oh. The bridge scene with the car, that's an awesome scene. Oh. It just shows how great Peter is and how he tries to take his mask off and show the kid that he's trying to help him and he's a good guy in order to make the kid feel more calm and get out of that situation and I just I just love it. I feel like Andrew, he's my favourite Spider-Man if you can't tell, um, he does such a good job at playing Peter Parker. Next up, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 that's going in spectacular. Don't agree with me? Cry about it. I love this film. This film's great. It doesn't deserve any of the heat it gets. It's amazing. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Pun intended. This film owns my heart. I, I just love it. I don't know what it is. I also seen this one in cinemas and um, Gwen Stacy's death, the ripe age of seven years old, broke my heart. <sighs> Some intense stuff and it still breaks my heart. Every single time I watch that scene, I just have to sit there and be like, they perfectly built up Gwen Stacy's death. I talked about this in my Lotus video, which if you haven't checked out, then why the hell have you not checked that out? Go check it out right now. It'll be one of these wee corners. But I perf per I talked about how they perfectly uh, done Gwen's death that Lotus didn't do, but it's a fan film, so whatever. <laughs> whatever, it doesn't matter. We're not, talk we're not here to talk about Lotus. Um, but they perfectly built it up. In the first film, we got to know Gwen. We got to love Gwen. Gwen... Mm, she's great, right? We love her and Peter loves Gwen too. He cannot survive without her and then the second film just completely destroys your heart. It takes Gwen and just <laughs> completely breaks your heart because it takes this character that you love and the main reason you also love her is because she makes Peter so happy. But Peter doesn't have a whole lot so him being happy because of her and then him getting that taken away. <laughs> But this film generally truly is a masterpiece. I also love the suit in this film. I prefer the, f the suit in the first film. However, the suit is very, very spectacular and it looks so cool, which is why it's in the spectacular thing. I need to stop doing that. Anyways, enough waffling. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, I actually really like this film. I'm gonna get, like, I I'm gonna get trashed in the comments for my opinions, but I really do like this film. Some people would not agree that it deserves to be in the top top. But I think so. I don't know what it is. Just every time I watch this film, I get hit with nostalgia and it's not even that old of a film. So basically, after I watched uh, Andrew's films, I got kind of out of Spider-Man for a few years. A year after Tom Holland's Spider-Man Homecoming came out, 2018, um, I watched it for the first time ever and I just fell completely in love with Spider-Man again and since then I've been in love with him. And this film is what helped me get back into it, so that's why it holds a special place in my heart, and I always will, don't care what anyone says. Iron Boy Jr., Stark Jr., shut up! I think in this film, it's great that we have Peter, who's being mentored by Iron Man, because it shows over the next few films his growth, and it also shows during the film that he doesn't necessarily need Iron Man to do everything. So people that call him Iron Boy Jr. are just wrong, because he didn't need Iron Man for everything. He proved himself, after he lost his suit, that he doesn't need Iron Man, and he can do it without him. He didn't even have Iron Man's tech, and he still took down the Vulture. But yeah, this film is just completely different to any of the Spider-Man films before, and I think that's also a reason I love it. I love Ned, I don't really like the love interest. Yeah, I feel like they messed around with the love interest in these films a bit. Um, I do, do really like the way in Andrew's films that they just stick with Gwen the whole time, because it really does build up her character more and makes you fall in love with her. And I don't like how we had Liz in the first film, because, I mean, it was pointless, wasn't it? We never got to see her character again, so why waste that? I feel like we should have went with MJ from the start. But I also get they want to do something different, so it's whatever. I'm just not a big fan of that. But every single part of everything else in this film, I adore. This film, <laughs> great. Into the Spider-Verse. I also really do love this film. Um, there's gonna be a lot of films up here. I love all the Spider-Man films. It's hard to put any low down. Um, in my opinion, I think this is way better than Across the Spider-Verse. I don't know, like I just, I there was no point in this film where I was bored. I enjoyed every single part of it. I also seen this in cinema and um, yeah, I just loved it. finally seeing a non-male spider person on the screen was phenomenal. I loved that um, and I also really liked the animation style. 
um, the different portrayals of the characters and the different types of characters. The music was great, the fight scenes were great, it was action packed, the story was fantastic. Heartbreaking also when, you know, like Miles is nobody and they have to leave at the end to go back to their own universes or else they'll die. Heartbreaking, like devastating. Not as bad as Tasm 2, but still heartbreaking. Next up is Far From Home. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put this film here. I feel like it should be there. I don't hate it. I, I, I've also seen this in cinemas. I don't hate it. I When I first saw it, I was wowed by it. Wowed. I thought it was really good. Um, but after rewatching, I'm just thinking about what actually happened. In terms of comparing it to the other Spider-Man films that we have, it's not nowhere near as good as the ones I've got above, which is mainly why I've placed it here. The ones in The Amazing and Spectacular, it's nowhere near as good as those. But it's not bad. There is no Spider-Man film that's bad. I may have said the Spider-Man 3 is bad, but it's not bad bad. It's just not good. I don't know what it is. It just... Listen, there is parts of it that are that are that I enjoyed. I really liked. Um, it's just not... I don't have much to say apart from the fact that it's just not like any of the other Spider-Man films on this list. Which is why it's there. I just I just didn't get the same feeling. I don't get the same feeling whenever I rewatch it as I do with the other ones. Listen, I loved Mysterio as a villain because I like the idea of seeing Spider-Man fight something that's not, you know, it's it's elements and he's fighting the water and the fire and all that stuff. That's cool. I really liked that because it was it genuinely confused my head how he was gonna win against it because he can't really use his webs against that. But nonetheless, the scene where Spider-Man is in Mysterio's big illusion thing and it's like the void, it's like black and it has all the green stuff and there's all the different illusions keep coming up like Iron Man, Back from the Dead and all those things. That scene was scary. That had me in my, on the edge of my seat and I was terrified. Which is why I'm not going to say it's awful because of that scene and a few other scenes in the film that I quite enjoyed. So it's just going to stay in the mid place for now. Spider-Man No Way Home. Perfection. That's all I'm gonna say. Peak cinema. I have never cried so much at a film than I did at Spider-Man No Way Home. It wasn't even because it was really, really sad. It was sad, but it wasn't... That's not why I cried. I cried because Andrew and Toby were there. That... <sighs> my whole cinema... I went on opening night, and my whole cinema was jumping up, clapping, screaming when Andrew came on and Toby came on. As they should. So, I'm just gonna place this film right here in front of all these because it's way above any other spider-man film for me it's it's the best like it's so good um did i say the amazing spider-man 2 is my favorite because it's not this one is then that one i think i say things but don't actually like register them there was genuinely not a moment where i was bored i watched every single scene in this film and loved it i ate it up ate it up and left no crumbs peak cinema peak cinema i literally have nothing else to say peak cinema the the goosebumps i got seeing andrew and toby back on screen and helping tom defeat all of their villains <sighs> nothing is ever in my life gonna be that feeling like ever and then also seeing daredevil daredevil in an mcu film <coughs> in a spider-man film <coughs> i love daredevil okay the final film across the spider-verse go mid cry about it run before i get Actually, you know what? I don't think it deserves to be there. I'll go there. Okay, yeah, I'll put it there. Okay? I'll put it there. <laughs> I don't want to get cancelled. I'm joking. I, I, re rethinking this, I don't think it's mid. I, I say it's amazing. I say amazing. Compare it to Into the Spider-Verse? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Not as good as that, but it's still really good. I did really enjoy this. I also wore Spider-Man set to see it. Uh, there was a group of 12-year-old boys shouting the Spider-Man theme at me, which was fantastic. I p personally, the reason it's here and not spectacular, I forgot what happens in most of it. I need to rewatch it. I know the main parts, but it didn't all stay in my head after watching it, which usually happens when I watch a Spider Man film that's just out, like the recent ones. Whenever I watch them or watch any Spider Man film for the first time, it's stuck in my head for a few days and I'm thinking about it. I just didn't get that with this one. I don't know. Anyways, thank you very much for watching the video if you've got this far. Um, if you want to support me, then please do smash that subscribe button because every single subscriber makes me happy. If you want to see me happy, then why not subscribe? But also, if you do subscribe and turn the notification bell on, then you'll find out whenever I make more awesome videos just like this one.
Let me know what type of content you want in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a lovely day or night wherever you are, and peace.